Hello. Hi. Welcome back again to Wheel Takes, a podcast that is sometimes about the Wheel of Time and sometimes about other stuff. Today, it's about the Hunger Games series, specifically the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. My name is Gus. I have read the entire Hunger Games trilogy, and I'm a first-time reader of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes up to chapter 20. And I'm Allie, and same. <laughs> I just realized I could have been doing that this whole time. Yeah, well, yeah, for this one, yeah, we could, well, hmm. Maybe this is why our episodes are so long. We're just not efficient. No. We're just not efficient people. This podcast only contains spoilers for what we've already read. You know what that is. Look at that. That was easy. It's Ballad Chapter 20. Damn it. I did it again. Uh, yeah. Hey, how you doing? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's yet another day since the movie came out and we still haven't seen it. We can't. Because we haven't finished the book. We got to do that first. Alas. But we're a good portion of the way through it, right? We, I mean, yeah. What no. chapter are we on? 20. 20. I think after this, it's uh, the the proposed plan by our fully spoiled listeners. Well, yeah. I mean. Was three more episodes? Lucy's done with the game. She won per my assumption. Yeah. Now we have part three. Um, I was like, there's no way this cute, awesome person is gonna die part not on my watch part three the peacekeeper uh, yet to come two pages in we're kind of crushing Good it for us we're about what a solid halfway through or more than that more than we're, we're at the beginning of part that. three look at us because part three is called the peacekeeper crushing i feel like this is where suzanne is really going to kill our hearts and spirits i'm and sure well here's what we got coming up next week is chapters 21 through 24 yeah or, you know, maybe the next seven weeks, depending on how long it takes us to talk about that, because sure. that's kind of how we do. Uh, then chapters 25 to 27 after that, and then 28 to the end. And uh, many, many a live react, well, two a live react has been requested between them. Oh, shit. Uh, we were sp- Okay. Well, we were supposed to come up with alternate bingo squares for today. I haven't done that yet. We were supposed to come up with alternate bingo it squares? It was proposed... By our listeners, that at this point we be able to replace some of our bingo squares. I thought we already did. We not do that already. No. Uh, and what was proposed was for each one we get, we can replace one square. However, both of us have about ten, so we would basically be refilling the entire rest of the card, and I don't think that's entirely fair. So I would propose instead that we each get five, five, uh, either five, five news. Moves? moves or total replacements of something new damn okay hold on but gotta, we don't have to do it right now well i gotta cross off what i got hold on i have that i saved that somewhere hold on well yeah but i got some more stuff since then did we decide career alliance origin was something that i could have um we can say no maybe we can say no um <laughs> so the, I, I, at, at last count what you said you have is Marcus has sad death, Mockingjay mentioned, heartbreaking child death, someone who's executed, free space, capital interference, younger uh, main trilogy names of families, uh, Tigress gives Lucy J a makeover, leads to stylists, gruesome mutations, Corio falls for Lucy Gray, and Career's Alliance Origin. Here you go. I, I have it here. But I have a couple that I've won since Oh, then. Lucy Gray wins. Yeah, that's Yeah, true. I've gotten Lucy Gray wins. So hold on, let me. Here's let the me thing: edit. we we could we could do this live, but I propose that we wait. Hold on, take a quick break. We're we gonna make, come back. No, 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 no. I propose that we make our edits because I don't have time to come up with new predictions right now. Uh, we make our edits ahead of the next episode. Wait, wait, of, wait. So we we create new predictions. It, what was proposed? Oh, sorry, I missed this. Was that for each one that we got, we could make one new one? I think that's too much. Because you have 11, and I think I have 9. <laughs> Catch up, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, let me check. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You have 12. You have to count Lucy Gray wins. I did. Okay. You have 12. If you mm. don't know what we're talking about, I'm so sorry. Down in the description, uh, there's a link to bingo cards that we've made of predictions. Yep. Did we, That's what we're talking about. Is it with the updated, with the X's? on what we got right or it's okay if i no. don't remember I, I, i'm sorry it's okay if uh, no. this is like a third job that we have this is a third our third job 
And you have 12. We love it the most. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow. Do I it's not, a tight did race. I not do Lucy Gray? I did. It's down there. Um, so, so, uh, if we, if we did it as proposed, we would get almost entirely new predictions, which is not, I, I think that's too much. So I propose we get half as many. So you would get five, you get six and I would get five, or we could also swap six or five. Sound good? We'll do that for next week. Yeah, because there are definitely ones I want to swap, and I could well, definitely yeah. replace some, too. That's Marcus fine. allies with Jessup. Marcus attacks Sejanus. Corey gets three strikes. Lucy kills Jessup. All of that, I don't think so. Well, okay, but those are reasonable things at the time. They were. Of course. Th- those are my predictions. I know. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm validating well, I appreciate that you those were much. reasonable assumptions at the time. Allie, here's the thing. Considering we knew nothing about what would happen. That's true. Here's the thing. Yeah. Where'd we leave off? Ooh. Um, the snakes? Did we talk about the snakes yet? The snakes got dumped, yeah. The snakes no, no, got dumped. No, no, not even dumped. He, he put the handkerchief in the napkin. What was the last thing that happened? Oh, okay. So yeah, we yeah, still yeah, have yeah. the, the, okay, the, the most part. Okay, I knew it was something to do with the I meant to, again, this week, go back and reread the chapters and take notes for chapters 19 and 20. And instead of doing that, I read Convenience Store Woman and I reread Of Mice and Men. Uh, uh, because I, I have I have six books left of my Goodreads story graph goals and, and only a few weeks. So I started just pounding short books. I can't keep track of those things because I am so competitive with myself. I'm not, co- I'm not really that competitive with other people. But if I do not achieve gold stars and excellence in everything I do, then I have a mental breakdown. Does this make <laughs> sense? Yes. Yeah. It's like, it's not about other people. It's that if I do not get an accolade, I will wither and die. I understand. And so um, if I don't get the like, you read the most books on story graph, I will wither and die. This is so why I have to not pay attention to any of that. This is why you don't have an Apple Watch anymore. It's yeah, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle filling the little circles. Filling the circle. I yeah. needed to fill them every day. And if I did not fill them every day, then I was a failure for that day. It's not true. It's an That's it, not how that works. It, this is this If you don't fill them that day, oh it's okay. When I speak to people, I I immediately can tell whether or not they have a sense of internal peace based on whether or not they recommend getting an Apple watch to me because I'm like, I can't handle the responsibility. I can't handle it. I, I will die. Well, I have a Samsung watch, but I just kind of forget about it sometimes. That was not possible for me. Yeah, that was not possible. I needed to fill the circles every day to make the watch like me. I mean, I, <laughs> you know what? The Samsung one sends like really passive aggressive notifications. If you don't Is it like Duolingo, it's it goes like you didn't meet your goal very many days last week. Let's try to do better next week. Oh, and I I'm see. Like, that would break me. me. That would break me. And I know that the intention there is like, hey, chin up, bud. It's going to be all right. That's but, not how it comes across. But that's not how I read no, it. No, because we're like uh, sad, nerdy overachievers. Of course, it wouldn't come across that way to us. Yeah. Like, no, we, me especially, I have a problem with needing to achieve. And like people go, that's great. No, it's not. <laughs> No, it's not. It makes me 0% fun to be around. I have to actively work on it. Like, I have to actively sit there and go, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not accomplishing anything right now. I'm just, I'm just watching TV. It's fine. Like, this is good. I don't need to get on the spin bike to like accomplish four things at once. No, no, it's fine. I can just sit here and be a goblin and have my goblin day. See, and yes, this is why the, 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 I, 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 I understand handle. that the reading goals are actually not good <laughs> because then it, I can't, I can't, it pay. productivizes a, a leisure activity. I, I, yes, I can't have my leisure activities be productified is that what you said that's not a real word but i yeah you know what though it should be because i can't have it this is capitalism <sighs> this is capitalistic reading ah! we're not our worth is not measured by our productivity no it's ah. fun so, this is supposed to be fun it'd be like uh it'd be like uh, like exercise is supposed to be fun it's supposed to be fun it is it's supposed to be enjoyable and i just yeah i can't i i can't i i would i would sit there 
I remember I was working at Second City when I first got an Apple Watch. My my mother gave it to me for Christmas, which was very sweet, really sweet, and created several years worth of complexes surrounding the Apple Watch. <laughs> because I would sit there at the front area. I want you to imagine you, you're you excited to go see a comedy show and you're like, oh boy, I get to go sit down and watch a comedy show. And you walk in and the person greeting you at the front desk is shaking their arm and standing compulsively, acting like they're jacking off a ghost. <laughs> I just want you to imagine that. Uh, That's your first impression of Second City. Well, that was also a sketch at Second City. It was. No, literally, I got that. You know what? Now that I think about it, I got that phrasing, that exact phrasing from, from a sketch, sketch at Second yeah, City yeah, yeah. because <clears throat> I went and saw it and, and I felt so understood in that moment. Yeah. That that was what I was doing. I was jacking off a ghost. That's vigorously. what it looks like. That's what it looks like. You know when you like. see a comedy thing and you're like, I feel seen on a fundamental yet uncomfortable level. Yes. I felt so exposed. So, Allie, chapter nineteen. Chapter nineteen of the ballad. Of, Speaking of, of jacking off ghosts of Tobosis. I wish snow were a ghost. Sometimes. Is real. I hate that guy. I hate him so much. I he. Is worse than Gale, for uh, sure. Well, yeah, yeah. But, you know, also, let's remember, it's Gale. See, I saw this TikTok today, or yesterday, or one of the many days I doom scroll TikTok, where somebody said, oh my god, what did they say? They said that people are, are ranking Gale worse than Coriolanus on those little ranking things, where you get to rank, like, how bad people are. It's because everyone wants to fuck Tom Blythe's version of Coriolanus. Well, there's that. There is that. And, and Excuse me, sorry. And darlings, just because he's hot does not mean you should <laughs> fuck him. And I need to say that again for those of you who weren't listening. Save yourselves. Just because he's hot does not mean you need to fuck him. You can look but not touch. So anyway, so there's that. <laughs> but it, it also goes to show that the worst crime that you can commit, this is what they said, and I agree 100%, in literature is not, you know, horrific acts. It's being annoying. Gail did, you know, blow up Prim. Uh, yes, but I also feel like the annoying... Okay, but Coriolanus Snow created the conditions. He killed thousands of Prims. That's hundreds true. of Prims. That's true. Millions of Prims. <laughs> Uh, Billions. I did the math. Prim I think it was like two thousand some. Okay, so I was right the first it's time. It's a lot. I, I said thousands, and I was like, I don't know if it's if it's gone that far, but it well, has it's twenty uh, twenty three times uh, seventy three plus twenty two. There you go. Yeah, or twenty. I guess I should say twenty three times seventy four minus one because Katniss and Peta plus however many of the victors died at the quarter quell. Oh yeah, most of them. I'm still not over the fact that Chaff just showed up, was Hamish's friend, and then just kind of died. It was so real. I feel like she Suzanne forgot Collins. about. I feel like she forgot about him. I don't know. And He's, or I feel like she does that though. She at does, the same time it, where she's but it like works. somebody seems important and, and then just they're not. not like Foxface. Yeah, she's okay. the real kingpin. Anyway, we are 15 minutes in. We're doing this. Okay. What had he done? What on earth had he done? His heart raced as he blindly turned down one street and then another, trying to make sense of his actions. He couldn't think clearly, but he had the dreadful feeling that he'd crossed some line that could not be uncrossed, like when you get an Apple Watch for Christmas, <laughs> and you have one of those personalities that fixates on things. I forget what he did. Oh, yeah, he, he did the, the handkerchief. Hanky, the hanky, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, why is he being so dramatic? Oh, no, he did actually do something that was quite... A, that was bad. But, see, that's like the coolest thing he's done. It is. I was fu I was fucking with Coriolanus in that moment. He's good, dude. In this one instance, in this one moment, I was like, "All right, Coriolanus, you and I can be friends." And then I remembered that no, we can't. he is a war criminal. You know what I have seen? And again, you're on TikTok. You you osmose things without getting spoilers. People are like, "Oh yeah, I watched the movie," and and I was like, "Man, I really." Oh, this guy's not so bad. So I had to go back and reread the book so I could hear his internal monologue again. And remember, no, he is. No, he is the worst person in the world. I think that's the thing. I remember hearing that any piece of media, visual especially, that portrays like a cult leader or, or somebody with a charismatic cult of personality sort of following, if it does its job effectively, 
it fails. Because, like, Tiger King, for instance. That guy's a horrible person. Oh, the really terrible. But, like, the the way that he gets his accolades or accol- you know his attention is that he's like disarmingly funny and so people watch the show and then they're like oh man free joe exotic and i'm like no he's a terrible person and it's the same thing with this to an extent i'm not saying that who is saying free joe exotic people on people Reveal on twitter yourselves. people on twitter were saying that i'm, I'm not you, saying you are silly you are non you are not serious people well, it's, it's you like are the, silly silliness it's like i and Sit i haven't down. seen fight club but i understand there's a similar thing with fight club um, where like you're not supposed to like these people, but you but uh, if you misunderstand the thing, because which the point a lot is of people misunderstand Fight Club, which is fun, is that then you like them, but actually like it's monstrous. But anyway, by fun I mean terrible. But like the thing about Snow is, if Tom Blythe does Snow effectively, which I understand he does, Snow is a likable person outside. Well, aren't there people that watch? And this is not a judgment necessarily. Midsummer, but aren't there people that yes watch? Yes, Midsummer, it's the same thing, and. And they think it's a good for her movie. You can tell, yeah. And we're not going to spoil Midsummer. Yeah, but but can I say that based on your perspective that you have after the movie is over, apparently is yeah. supposed to indicate how likely you are to be susceptible, uh, susceptible to, to cult. joining a cult. And I think that's fascinating. Yeah, it's the same thing because because again, these are organizations or people who have designed themselves to be disarming and to f- get an outside observer to look past their flaws or to revel in their flaws and think their flaws are in fact virtues. And so I think that like part of why people come out of the movie thinking, Oh God, Coriolanus is not that bad. Actually look at him is because like, if you're not in his head and you're not hearing him think about how Ma Plinth should be mashed like a turnip, then you're, you know, maybe you're going to hate him less. He looks like a victim. He does look like a victim, and he he plays it very well. But he's a very charming person, and like, also, I think I I I desperately need people to understand that hot people can be bad. Oh yeah, I desperately need them to understand that. I desperately need them to understand that people who are likable can still be bad. Mm-hmm. That like, we have been conditioned to assume. That because someone is off-putting that they are bad, which sometimes may be the case, but oftentimes there are other people who don't seem off-putting who are just as bad. We it have is true. to we have to be vigilant. And like, yeah, in these kinds of groups and stuff, they strike when you are vulnerable and they are very like when people are like, oh, what idiots that they could join this cult. No, nope. They're probably there are a lot of people that join these cults who are well educated, very intelligent, come from really stable, great backgrounds. These people are just really good at convincing people. Yeah, that's to how they survive them. this long. And then there's the sunk cost fallacy of well, I can't be wrong because I've come this far and spent this, this much long. money. Yeah, but usually. I think a really good hint, and I say this often, is if somebody's like, "Oh, God said we have to all fuck me." Probably I feel like not. That's a really probably good not good. Hint. Probably that's a good bad. hint. That's a really good hint. So anyway, chapter nineteen. I, I, so I, yeah, yeah, he's concerned because he's dropped the hanky in the tanky. <sighs> <sighs> and he's like, "Well, I didn't know that the snakes were going to be in the arena." And I go, "Uh." I mean, didn't we, though, kind of know that that's what was going to happen? They're the same color as her dress, and she said that she had a surprise for them or whatever. And that, that inspired Lucy J, by Lucy. Yeah. And Lucy, Lucy, Lucy J. Lucy J. Lay, whoa. Cue the mocking Jay whistle. I've, I've combined them. Lucy Gray uh, did drop the snake down Mayor Lip's daughter's back. Right. But he kind of thinks, like, well, how would they ever trace this back to me? Well, bro. Well, they do. Y- y- unfortunately. Yeah, very easily. But I would have done the same thing. Gosh, who would have rigged this twist to benefit Lucy Gray Baird? And who had access to do so? And who knew about the snakes? Maybe the guy was macking on Maybe her. Maybe the dude who was macking the... on her and thinking like, well, she's not really subhuman. And he keeps going. I mean, if you think about it, she's like practically she's capital. Like, she's like basically a person, like almost like a person, you know? Like, like a very loyal dog. But yeah, man. You all honestly... I want the snakes unleashed on these people. Uh, that's the way to do it. 
So he goes by the Plinth apartment and decides to pop in the first time he's ever checked in on a friend. Friend in massive sarcasm quotes. Oh, and he basically, doesn't he go in there and is basically like uh, seeing if maybe like he'll get some kind of financial yeah. reward. Yeah, he's like, what all right. What a fucking asshole. He's like, all right, I'm going to I'm gonna go in there and act like I'm just checking in. And then when they offer me the money, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to like, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to refuse. And then they'll insist and then I'll take it. You are such a dickhead. Such an absolute dickhead. But I also get it because he's about to lose his house. Yeah. Like, both things can be true. But I feel like, why not? I understand why he can't be honest about it. But at the same time, I'm like, why not be honest about it? Yeah. Who wasn't suffering during the war? Can't we just acknowledge it? I understand. But pride is stupid. Yes, I I understand. Can we just discuss it? Pride is dumb. I have none of it anymore. (laughs) I don't give a fuck anymore what people think of me. I, I, I think because who gives a fuck? I think I think what does it do for you? I understand. I understand pride. Uh, I, I mean, I kind of do. I, I think I like, like I understand. Ugh. I understand going like I don't want to be beholden to the plinths. I don't you know, he's really fixated on social standing. Well, they're beholden to you right now, as you know. So why not just be like honest with them and go, listen, I'm your son's only friend and we're about to lose our house. Could we do an IOU situation? Yeah, I'm not defending this, but I understand I understand how he arrives at the conclusion that he can't do this, but I do also think that it's classist bullshit. It is classist bullshit. You know? And I also think that Coriolanus fucking sucks. Yeah. And is the worst. The worst. The worst. Uh, yeah. And Sejanus has gone to bed early. I don't believe that. I don't, I, I don't know where this dude is, but he's, but he's not, not in here. town. He, he's he ain't around. A, he's a fucking key, peacekeeper. Yeah, he, he is. probably is. I bet they bought him I out of being executed. I bet we're going to be seeing him executed. Again, so. They bought him out of being executed because the capital I know would have executed his ass or at yeah. least A-boxed his ass, right? He was doing rebellious activity on fucking camera. Well, yeah, and he chucked the fucking chair at the thing. Yeah, no, this guy's got a one-way yeah. ticket to Avoxville at the minimum. Well, Peacekeeperville would be the minimum. Avoxville is a little worse, I think. No, I feel like they were going to put him on Avox train, uh, if not death train. And then they were like, never mind, why don't, because of this scholarship, we'll just make him a peacekeeper. Sure. I feel like that's what happened. Well, maybe we'll get an answer to that after these ads. Welcome back. We don't get an answer. No, to we that. don't. It's not going to be. It's driving me. Nuts. I don't know when. I assume he's going to come back. I don't think she's just going to have Sejanus board the midnight train going anywhere and not come back. But we'll see. He's leaving on that midnight train to thirteen. I uh, see. I was going for a different. 12? I was going for a different thing. What were you going for? Took the midnight train going anywhere. anywhere. Nice. Uh. Okay. So she asks if he wants coffee, tea, or milk. Milk's a weird thing to ask someone if they want it. Like, if you had company, would you ever be like, do you want milk? No. Maybe if there were seven. Is it horchata? Because I go for horchata. I just, uh, listen, I understand that there are milk lovers like in horchata. this world. I am lactose I like intolerant, milk. so I can't relate. I do enjoy milk. I haven't really had it by itself I since I was a child. I didn't even enjoy milk as a child. Oh, like I, I No, I didn't like it. They I had understand to put, that that's atypical. They had to put chocolate in I it. I love milk. I drank milk like nobody's business. That doesn't surprise me. And yet I've broken milk. like seven bones. And I have broken none. What the fuck? I know. I truly, I should have. Yeah. I think it's just because of my, like, ligaments and joints being so fucky. Like, nothing tenses up. It all just, like, bloop. That does help. Yeah, that does help. I'm just gumby. Yeah. I just go down like a sack of grain. <laughs> just flop. <laughs> There's no stiffness in this body. Um, okay. But, yeah, so she tries to, like, Ma Plinth tries to get him to eat. She's only known by Ma. Suzanne Collins hates naming mothers. She does mothers. not name mothers. She Grand will ma'am? never give them a name. Grand... Well, Katniss has a name, but... Mo- no, but like people who start as mothers. I know, I know. Her mother... But, sorry, go ahead. Katniss's mother has no name. Grandmam has no name. Peta's mother has no name. Gail's mom does have a name, right? Does Gail's mom have a name? I thought it was just like 
Gail's mom, which is how children think. Yeah. They don't they don't think of people with names, but all the dads get names. Corey well, Linus. I guess Evergreen Everdeen didn't get Evergreen, a name. Evergreen Everdeen didn't we get did a name. We did have to name Evergreen Everdeen. Um Someone pointed out to me, Reese, and I know we're just not fucking sticking to the point at all. But no, we well, are because you know, this is this is tangentially someone, related. Someone to the point. pointed out on uh, Twitter the other day that in the epilogue of Mockingjay, Katniss does not tell her what tell us. Katniss does not tell us what her children's names are. Oh, and they were like, and I that really. I find that really moving because for the rest of the series, she has been on display and every single facet of her personal life has been turned inside out and shown off to everybody. And now at the end, when she is safe and secure, she elects to keep this information to herself. Okay. This is related. I promise. Okay. It makes me think of, okay, so the Duggar family, right? I I swear to God, this is related. I swear to God. Uh, These are the... Uh, evangelical, uh, like vaguely post-apocalyptic cult people. One of them was arrested for possession of CP. Th- these are the people you're it's, talking about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because I I did I did a weird ADHD hyper focus on them. Like because two they had years a, ago. they had a they had a show. They had a show when and I you was did growing not up. Watch the show. I did watch you, the show. Oh wow! I did watch. But then the you show. were like horrified and okay, yeah. Not at the time. All at right. the time, I was just like, "That's weird." And then I, as an adult, was like, "Whatever happened to those people with like the eighty thousand children?" Because I was a child and I didn't yeah, think didn't about the it. implications yeah. of how horrifying that would be to have that many children. And the only reason you can provide for them is the TLC show, right? Um, and that they don't actually. Ray, they didn't actually really, really raise any of those kids. Um, I did like a huge deep dive on them a while ago. And the more you learn about this cult that they're in, the like crazier it gets. Um, the documentary Shiny Happy People, I think is what it's called. Oh, it is about them, isn't it? Yeah, it's really fucked up though. So trigger warnings yeah. abound. But, um, uh, Ginger Duggar, one of the daughters had like all of these, you know, had basically had her whole childhood, her whole traumatic childhood, like blown up all over, right? To the point where, you know, the Duggars invited people into their homes constantly who were fans of the show, and one of them stole her diary and put it on the internet. That's bad. Yeah, that's really fucked up, right? Even if it, she wasn't writing any about anything scandalous, it's still such a massive invasion of privacy for a child who also already didn't have any privacy, right? So then what was... She grew up, she had a couple kids, and she decided to stop putting them on the internet. And her fans were pissed, like acting all entitled. They're like, we have a right to your children, essentially. No, never. To seeing them. And so she doesn't post any pictures of their faces online, which I think is smart. That's good, yeah. I, yeah, I, really yeah, smart. People are creepy as fuck online, um, especially about children. But um, yeah, so she... I. But, she's got all kinds of problematic and fucked up beliefs, but I do respect the hell out of her for doing that sure. and going, you know what? I didn't get to have any privacy as a, as a kid, but I'm going to make sure my daughters do. That's pretty awesome. It as is. a cycle breaking move. Granted, everything else about her is pretty problematic, but that is anyway. Admirable. Katniss is great. So cat, but Katniss is, Katniss great, is great and nothing about her is problematic. And I really admire that. She also kind of did that for herself. Yeah. 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 Um, but okay, so Coriolanus says about Sejanus, the capital really isn't the best fit for him. And she says, for any of us, Splints, really, Strabo says that while it's hard for us now, it will be better for Sejanus and his children. No, it won't. It won't. No, it won't. I don't think. That's Let, fucking did, bullshit. Did, did, did I guess if you us? mean, uh, like, rather than in the district where they'd be in the ground because you're a war profiteer. Both of us predict Sejanus dies because I just don't oh, think yeah, he's no, making Sejanus, it out. Oh, yeah, no, Sejanus is fucked. I just don't think he's making it he's out of fucked. this one. They're going to make sure he doesn't make it back from wherever he is. And she says, your family and friends, that's your real life, Coriolanus. And we left all ours back in two. But you know that already. I can see it. I'm glad you've got your grandma and that sweet cousin. Coriolanus found himself trying to cheer her up saying that things would be better once Sejanus graduated from the academy. The university had more people. It won't be better. It no. would not be better. I didn't predict Sejanus <laughs> dies. And more kinds of people from all over the capital. Oh, neither did you. Huh. He was sure to make new friends. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Sejanus dies right no, there. No, I can't read. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Okay, but this is what's important. This is what yes, I want to yes, read. Yes, yes, Mrs. Yes. Plinth nodded but didn't seem convinced. Mm. Why isn't she? Why isn't she convinced mm. that he's going to the university? Probably because he's a peacekeeper. That's what I think. Okay. So yeah. So Strabo comes. He's also a dickhead. He's very out of it's sorts. Like battle of who can be a bigger dickhead. But I. I'm kind of glad he doesn't give Coriolanus what he wants. Yes. Because I feel like he assesses Coriolanus and goes, I know you. I know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. He's shrewd. He says, you look like your father. I hear that a lot. Did you know him? Our business overlapped at times because you're both war profiteers. That's why. Mm -hmm. It's striking, the resemblance. But you're nothing like him, really. No, thought Coriolanus. I'm poor and powerless. Although maybe the perceived difference was good for tonight's purposes. His district-hating father would have loathed seeing Strabo Plinth admitted to the capital and becoming a titan of the munitions industry. That was not why he'd given his life in the war. All right. He didn't give his life in the war. He got hit by a stray bullet. Like, let's please. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was an accident. He was not out there bravely. He didn't fall on a grenade for his comrades. He got hit by a stray bullet. He was a casualty. A stray bullet. Stray bowl. Oh, wait a, minute, wait a minute. I have to hold on. Conspiracy. I'm mean, just making there it is. Oh, I've hit a wrong note. My bad. Okay. Nothing at all. Or you'd never have gone into that arena after my son. Impossible to imagine Crassus Snow risking his life for me. Yeah, man. Crassus was a dick. A total dick. I keep asking myself why you did it. Not much choice, really, thought Coriolanus. He's my friend. Oh, you fucking fuck. No, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> no matter how many times I hear that, it's difficult to believe. <laughs> but even from the beginning, Sejanus singled you out. Maybe you take after your mother, huh? She was always gracious to me when I came here on business before the war, despite my background. The very definition of a lady. Never forgot it. Are you like your mother? No. <laughs> no, he's a fuckhead. He's All right. a twit. The conversation wasn't going the way Coriolanus had imagined. Where was the talk of reward money? He couldn't be persuaded to take it if it was never offered. <laughs> Give me money. Money me. Money now. Me a money needing a lot now. A reference to Always Sunny Always Philadelphia. Sunny is, as are all of my fucking and references. Says, I'd like to think I am in some respects. In what respects? <laughs> That I need money. Money me. We shared a fondness for music. Did they? She liked music and he didn't hate it, he guessed. Music, huh? You twit. And I do think we both believed... Oh, this is, the, this is about as subtle as a fucking fright train. A fright train. He's got to get better at politicking than this. Because, my God. And I do think we both believed that good fortune was something to be repaid on a daily basis. Not taken for granted. What? You fucking idiot. He's basically like, give me money, please. <laughs> give me money. Money me. Money, money now. now. Me a money needing a lot now. It's Corey like, Lannis, it's so like looking in a mirror. It's like the Spider-Man meme. They're like both looking. I said Spider-Man. Like grand ma'am. Spider-Man. I like it. I like it. She's on the ceiling. <laughs> Marvel's woke. We created Spider Man. Amazing. Oh my god, that's not even Marvel, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> Spider Man, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, anyway, it anyway, is. anyway, anyway, Hold anyway. On. This is why we never finish <laughs> chapters. We have too much fun. Uh, oh, okay. Hold what on. a shame. Oh, and Coriolanus asks, because he, he's like, thank you. Bye. <laughs> and uh, Coriolanus says, just wanted to check on Sejanus. You liar. You don't check on anyone. Never once. Will he be coming back to school soon? No telling. But thanks for stopping by. Okay, he's definitely a peacekeeper though, right? I think he's mm. I think he's out of here. Yeah, he's if he's not dead, which I don't think he is because I think he's gonna cause no. more drama. No. Drama in a good way, I should say. Oh yeah, no, but, he's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Okay, so he left and he's like, This was a ginor ginormous waste of time and I'm like nice. Just nice. I just also thought this line was funny. He settled down to work writing the three C words on a scrap of paper. Wait a minute. We didn't read our notes. I don't have any. I, I, I talked Do about I? that earlier. Hold on. We're, we're a whole mess. This is great. 
I, I am having such a wonderful time. Mess. This is excellent. Whatever. Oh, I wrote, yeah, Coriolanus, your dad was a mega dick. Strabo definitely knew Coriolanus is sniffing after some reward. Also, he's a dick, too. Dick recognizes dick. <laughs> Two dicks, Spider-Man memeing. <laughs> oh, look, food-related trauma. If only we could see the trauma we carry and the trauma of the people we're oppressing, please. Huh. Oh, my God, the skirt thing. Oh, when the snakes go on her skirt. Oh, yeah. That's fucking crazy. So he does his little essay of all the C words, all of them, every C word there is. Every last one. And he thinks about what it'd be like to be in the arena and what and how he would be. And he's up to like two in the morning. Okay. Then the first tribute makes an appearance once he's back at the viewing area and it's wovey oh and she looks awful yeah this is sad she's like super skinny and filthy and she's clutching an empty water bottle wonder where she got that uh and hilarious starts sending her all this food as the supplies showered her wovey lifted her hands but seemed in a daze She pawed at the ground, located a bottle of water, and struggled to unscrew the cap. After a few gulps, she sank back against the wall and gave a small belch. A thin stream of silverish liquid trickled out of the side of her mouth, and then she went still. She dead. So Lucy maybe killed her. Lucy absolutely killed her. Yeah. You remember you were like, ah, she poisoned someone. And I went, it's one of the frail ones. You went, no. I forgot it was one of the frail ones. It's Wovey. I believe that she accidentally poisoned Wovey and that water bottle was meant for someone else. It was for anybody. I mean, here's the thing. She needs to kill everybody to live, right? Right. But like, I think she was hoping it would be like Reaper, not Wovey. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's no way for them to really tell that she's dead, but they're like, she's dead. Which I go, okay, so that explains why they started monitoring their heart rates, Mm -hmm. because that would be frustrating to the betters, unfortunately, that they couldn't tell when the time of death was Mm -hmm. and like whether or not they were actually dead yet. It's agonizing. It all is agonizing. So, yeah, Coriolanus is wondering if Lucy Gray managed to poison her. I'm thinking all signs point to yes not deliberately though but not not she didn't target wovey i don't think so but also on the scale of deaths in the arena probably one of the nicer ways to go poison am i wrong poison is not a pleasant way to die oh no i i feel like you know neck snap in the arena is probably one of the quicker ways to die oh you know or like clean blow to the back of the head poison Mm. Is probably horrendously painful. Oh. So this is actually probably one of the worst ways to go. Okay, I take it back. Yeah. I, I don't know. No, no, no. I, I, I could be wrong. I just feel like poison, from what I've read, sounds terrible. Oh, I haven't really looked into it. To be honest, I'm not planning on poisoning anybody no. anytime soon. Why are you looking into poison? I just read a book about uh, a murder mystery thing. It was oh. Japanese, and they had they were poisoned. So, oh, you know what? When I was going through my true crime phase, before I realized that it was actively really horrible for me, um, because I have anxiety, what? and you know what makes anxiety way worse? That, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I did read some not so nice things about some people who did some not so nice things to other people and it sounded like it wasn't fun but yeah so wovey's wovey's passed and they're talking about hey could have been worse she lasted a long time actually no, final eight is nothing to sneeze at i can't it isn't survivor yeah i mean it's one thing if it's like a gay like an actual game yeah but this these ain't people a game. are dying anyway oh and I feel like we get the start of why they do the, like, uh, announcements of who's dead in the sky. Yeah. Because it takes everyone else a long time to figure Figure out out who's dead. dead. Yeah. When Lucy Gray later is, like, counting. Yeah, honestly, Reaper putting them all in the center was kind of helpful. It was. Because, I mean, this is horrible, but how else are they supposed to know how many people are dead? Yeah. And once they start taking the bodies out of the arena, likely, I think, partially for aesthetic purposes... Because decomp is gross. 
I feel like games don't go on long enough for real decomp to set in, but I don't know. It's, it's some quick. of them are weeks, they've said. Oh, true. I forgot about those ones. Yeah. Like Annie's was super quick because it flooded, they flooded yeah. the arena yeah. and then it was just like, can you swim or not? Yeah. Bit of a whiff on that. Anyway. I feel like people would be like on the Reddit forums being like, that was one of the weaker seasons. <laughs> Am I wrong? There would totally be a Reddit thread no, there, for there this. There totally would There be. would totally be a subreddit called r slash hunger games where people would be like, my favorite Victor, why X Victor didn't deserve to win or like why X Victor is the best Victor of all time. This is why as the hunger games takes over the internet again, and I see more and more people posting things of like, okay, first I want to see Joanna's games. No. Then I want to see Phoenix game. I'm like, no, you don't. You have missed the point. That is, that is, that is anathema to the premise. That's like, I haven't watched any of the Squid Game TV show yet, but I get a little icked when I think about it, because it's like, what if we took the point out of this? <laughs> what if we literally created the Torment Nexus from the classic sci-fi novel, Do Not Create the Torment Nexus? And I saw an article today where somebody was like, we're going to create robot super soldiers. And I was like, have they not seen a single movie have they not seen a single movie? Ah! So Wovie's dead. So Wovie's dead. And he's wondering why Lucy Gray would have chosen Wovie as a target. Again, I feel like that was just kind of a... Kind of an accident, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't think she was specifically hoping to get Wovie. Because why would she be hoping to get Wovie when Reaper's walking around? Mm -hmm. And he tries to channel her telepathically which is such a like uh, i understand this no this is what he says let me help lucy gray or at least let me see that you're all right i miss you <laughs> okay i never mind fuck this guy yeah <laughs> and then district the district four kids uh scavenge all of wovie's food treach and coral right yeah yeah no which Tre yeah no, Treach died. Didn't Treach die? I don't remember. No, yeah, whatever. But definitely Coral. Mizzen. Mizzen. Coral and Mizzen, yeah. We got it at the same time. Look yeah. at you and me. Mizzen and Coral, yeah. So they they scavenged Wovie's food. I think it's interesting that, and Coriolanus does also, that neither of them stopped to think, how did this girl die? She's got no mark on her. Maybe we should be worried about the food that she's consuming. Hmm. So they're kind of dumb. Um, but also, they're hungry, so... And their children, so, you know. Oh, Mizzen's limping, but he's big, so he could be a threat until he's not. Oh, and then Coriolanus has this conversation with Festus, the worst one, Fester. Ah, this fucking kid. Because he can't bring himself to eat lima beans. This is actually, uh, this was a good conversation. No, this is they were a good talking about their war I traumas. just don't like Festus. No, Festus sucks. Like, all of the tributes, all, all of the mentors suck to a certain extent. Yeah, he says, here, lima beans still taste like the war to me. He gives it to Festus. And Festus says, that's me and oatmeal. One whiff and I want to hide in a bunker. That's you when you see oatmeal. I really have a problem with oatmeal. It's yeah. a shame because I love oatmeal. I really have a problem with it. It's okay. You can have it, just not in the same room as me. <laughs> I started putting peanut butter and protein powder in. It's great. I have, I just, the it's consistency, really I can't watch people eat it. I can't watch it happen. Anyway. That and yogurt and cottage cheese. Anything of that consistency, I can't watch someone eat it and I can't have them watch me eat it. <laughs> you can eat it though. You just can't, can't have other people see you eat it. I can eat, eat it, but no one cheese. can see or know that I'm eating it. You just ate cottage cheese yesterday. Yeah, but did you see me eat it? No. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm secretive about it. Anyway. Because of the mouth shape. The mouth shape? <laughs> yes, it's the mouth shape. <laughs> it's so infantile. It's the yeah. same mouth shape you use to eat anything else off of a spoon. It's horrible. You ever had cereal in front of a person? Well, it's, that's different. There's a crunch. There's a crunch to it. Have you ever eaten soup? Yeah, okay, but that's a slurping quality. It's a specific consistency where there's no slurp and there's no crunch. Pudding? It's You can't wash that either. Jello. Jello is different because it's it's too solid for that <laughs> to be a problem. <laughs> oh, We're boy. finding out on this podcast that I have so many neuroses oh, that Gus great. puts up with. I, I love you, buddy. I can't because because it's a joy. 
there's a reason for it. There's a specific reason for it that I, well, there's also, it's the mouse shape and it's the fact that oftentimes if someone talks while they're eating it, you can still see a little bit of it on their tongue still. How do you feel about Jolly Ranchers? That's fine because that's not a similar consistency. Sure. Even though it leaves a stain on your tongue? That's fine. The I stain see. on the tongue is fine. It's the it's it's the leavings. Well, on that note, we should leave for some ads. Welcome back. I don't know why I started. Oh, oatmeal, right? Fastest. Oh yeah. So he says that that's like oatmeal for him. He can't eat that. And Coriolanus starts worrying about whether, you know, when he has children, will they still be part of the elite capital social club? Dramatic irony at its finest. Oh, and he and Tigris are the only snows of their generation. And he says without her, he'd be headed into the future all alone. I feel like they are going to part ways. They're not going to end up on the same team. So he keeps watching for Coriolanus wanting to get an opportunity to feed her. But I feel like District 4 has started to notice the drones and go to where the drones go. Yeah, it was smart. Yeah, that's been yeah, happening. They're, they're in a fucking football field. Yeah. So it's e- it's like pretty easy to spot. Salt Lake City so or something. Lucy is wisely staying out of sight. Oh, people, the audience outside the arena is fighting over... Uh, who deserves to win more coral or treach? So, just like I said, oh, the treach? Reddit I thought threads. Treach died. No, treach hasn't died yet. Treach is another big guy, I think. Who got coral and Miz and Ty, teamed they up killed with somebody? Yeah, they, treach. Treach's dead. Right? Treach is super dead. I mean, now they're all dead. Oh, well, except they for... said who was worthiest? Yeah, it's treach. Treach died. Did treach die? Well, I guess you can look it up because we know that he's fucking dead now. I don't think it was Treach. Sorry. Oh, no, you're right. Oh, no, you're was, totally um, right. Treach is the one who gets the snake down the shirt. Yeah. Who did they kill? Tanner. They killed Tanner, I think. I think you're right. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, they killed Tanner. Anyway. And then they announce, and yeah, punches were thrown. It's fucking Reddit. It's fucking Reddit. Who mm-hmm. deserves to win Survivor? Ugh. Whoever wins. <laughs> um, and then Gaul comes on, and in a beat dropping moment, I wish there was like a beat drop that could be had right now. Gaius Breen has. Oh wait, another one of our academy students, Gaius Breen, has died. Dun, 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 dun. You know how they do that <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Yes, I know what you're talking about. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I feel like this is a beat droppy moment. That's funny. I mean, it's not, but the the remixes would be fire. Do we have yeah, do we have any approximation of a remix? Uh, that not we can that play? I can pull up. No, because if I play Sandstorm again, we'll get copyright issues. Ugh. Whatever. Okay. But that would be a perfect place to drop a beat. It would be. Although now you're just cheering for the death of children. I wasn't cheering for the death of a you child. You are! I just felt like it was a beat-droppy moment. Oh, yeah, fuck this kid. He I had his like, legs blown okay, off. Okay, but in the districts, they totally would have done it. They totally would have done a beat-droppy He's a child! Moment. I understand that. They might have. A fictional child. He's a child that's not real. I know. And Gaul definitely killed him. Or let him die. <sighs> he has more use as a propaganda tactic. Hey, Allie. Yeah. Should we talk about Maidgate? No, I don't think. I Why don't, don't you want to talk about to, Maidgate? I don't seem to recall Maidgate. What? Like, what? I, seem to I don't know what you're talking about. I I really think it should be more Made a Lago. I guess it starts yes. with an M. Yes, that's better. Okay, here's the deal. I said last episode what I thought to be true, which was that the maid that was killed by Persephone's family worked for Persephone's family. If that were the case. I would be perfectly justified in saying that the circumstances seemed too coincidental to be valid. Sure. Unfortunately for me, that was not (laughs) the case. 
As someone pointed out, she was the maid of a different family. My point stands, though, that if she had worked for the family, notably, that would have been a good theory. The Crane family. The Crane family. Yes. But if she had worked for Persephone's family, whose last name escapes me. Price. The Prices. That would have been a good theory. Unfortunately for me, that was not the case. And apparently there were also several other dead bodies in the street. Three, three, So yes. what I'm saying is Persephone Price's father is a serial killer. <laughs> and he keeps the bodies in the fucking, in the alleyway between his home and the Price's he, home. Uh, he can't bring them home. He has his children They there. will rot. I guess it's cold, isn't it? It's cold. Well, first of all, I don't think that he's planning on returning. I think it was a crime of opportunity. But no, but I obviously concede the point that probably the maid died of unfortunately starvation. Well, actually, I, I don't know what's better. It's n- neither is good, but I feel like she died of starvation, but I'm not wrong about Gaius. I'm definitely not wrong about Gaius. I don't think they tried that hard to save his life. His legs were blown off. He stayed alive. He was for al- so long. He was alive and talking in the hospital. Last we saw him, he was alive and cracking jokes. We saw him? Yes, in the hospital. He was alive and cracking jokes. We saw him? Swear to God. Yeah, Snow talked to him. He did? Mm Mm-hmm. And then didn't go visit. Yeah, they spoke, I believe. If that's the case, then I'm completely justified in thinking that he was murdered. Now someone's going to make that meme of the guy pointing to a butterfly, and it'll be me going, is this murder? That's what's going to happen. His two classmates were in critical condition, Gaius having lost both his legs and almost everyone else. Da, 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 da. And then the next time Gaius shows up, he is after he learns that Apollo and uh, Diane, uh, whatever, Dee Dee, are, Car- dead, yeah, yeah. are dead. And he's like, oh, my God. And meanwhile, Gaius, who used to tell jokes all the time, is barely alive. And then the next time Gaius shows up as a name, he's dead. So actually, with all the love in my heart, we did not see him. I'm just saying I doubt how hard they fought to keep him alive. Would you like me to hear? I don't recall what I said. No, I just think that they probably didn't try that hard to keep him alive. Possible. That's all I'm saying. Because the capital, Peter lost a leg, and the capital was able to put him back together. 60 four years later they have the technology all right you're telling me that they haven't figured out keeping people alive i don't we're an hour in (laughs) what are we doing (laughs) having a good time yes uh so anyway all that from gaius breen is dead then tesley gaius fracking baltar gaius fracking breen yeah so yeah so gaius is no longer with us and gall says In response, we've planned something special for the children in the arena. I hate her. This is a revenge action. Remember when we thought that uh, High Bottom was going to be the main villain? We were so wrong. We were super duper wrong. Gaul is just the worst. So yeah, so Tesla and Cirque are poking around in some rubble. Reaper's in the stands, wrapped in his cape of the flag. Treach runs out of the tunnel. And the oh, District yeah. 3 tributes run for the barricade. Because the snakes. And all of a sudden, there's this huge drone flying the Oh, yeah, the snake with the tank fucking snake in. tank, yeah. Oh, so the reason he ran out was probably because he thought that the drone was bringing something good, right? Because they keep showing up where with the drones are going. Yeah, so it's exactly like the end of Mockingjay. Oh, so he's showing up where he thinks good things are coming. There's going to be good coming. stuff, yeah. Oh, that's so fucked up. It is. Bullshit capital twist. Get a bingo square, everybody. The unusual package caught Treach's attention. Perhaps he thought some extra special gift had been earmarked for him because he halted as the drone reached the middle of the arena. Tesley and Cirque paused as well, and even Reaper rose to observe the delivery. The drone released the uncovered tank about 10 yards above the ground. Rather than shattering, the container bounced on impact. Then, like a flower opening its petals, its walls fell to the ground. Awful. Shakes, snakes, shakes. Snakes shot out in all directions, creating a multicolored sunburst in the dust. 
In the front row, Clemencia jumped to her feet and let out a blood-curdling scream, yeah, almost causing Festus to fall out of his chair. As most people were only registering the new development on the screen, her reaction seemed extre- extreme. Afraid that Clemencia would spill the whole story in her panic, Coriolanus leaped up and wrapped his arms around her from behind, not sure if the move was meant to be comforting or confining. Clemencia went rigid but silent. They're not here. They're in the arena. You're safe. This but he is continued a, this to hold on to her as the action Coriolanus. unfolded. Yeah. Maybe Treach's lumber district background had given him some familiarity with snakes. The second they erupted from the tank, he turned on his heel and sprinted for the stands. He bounced up the debris hill like a goat and kept moving, hurtling over seats as he ascended. The few moments of confusion that Tesley and Cirque experienced came at great cost. Tesley made it to one of the poles and managed to shimmy up a few yards to safety, but Cirque stumbled over a rusty old spear and the snakes overtook him. A dozen pairs of fangs pierced his body and then, as if satisfied, the snakes moved on. Pink, yellow, and blue streaked his body as the wounds pumped out bright pus. Ugh. Smaller than Clemencia with double the venom in his system, oh. Cirque struggled to breathe for about 10 seconds before he died. I just realized this is very similar to what Katniss hallucinates when she gets stung by the tracker jackers. Oh, yeah. Pus coming out of wounds and everything, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tesley stared at his fallen body and sobbed in terror as she clung to the pole. Below her, the delicate snakes bunched, rearing up and dancing around the base. And Dr. Gall says, these are mutations we've developed in our labs in the capital. They're only snakelets, but full grown, they'll easily outrun a human. Why would you need that? Anyway. They're the worst. That's what I would ask. God, she's the worst. She, she. Because I really, I've had enough of this dude. She's the worst. And that post will be no problem for them to climb. They're designed to hunt humans and reproduce rapidly at, so any casualties can be swiftly replaced. Why, why would you want <clears throat> So... Treach had climbed out onto the narrow shelf over the scoreboard, and Reaper had found refuge on the roof of the press box. The few snakes that had managed to scale the rubble into the stands gathered below them. The mics picked up the muted sounds of a girl's scream. They got Lucy Gray. Coriolanus nah, thought in despair. She's fine. The handkerchief didn't work. She's fine. But just then, Mizzen exploded from the tunnel nearest the barricade, oh. followed by a shrieking coral. A single snake dangled from her arm. She tore it free, but dozens charged after her the moment it hit the ground, targeting her lower legs. Mizzen flung away his trident and made a flying leap to gain the pole across from Tesley. Despite his bad knee, he halved his precious time climbing to his previous time climbing to the top. From there, he witnessed Coral's frantic but blissfully short end. With the targets on the ground disposed of, most of the snakes regrouped under Tesley. Her grip on the pole began to fail, and she cried out to Mizzen for help, but he only shook his head, more stunned than malicious. Like, what the fuck do you want me to do? There's like seven million snakes down there. I mean, that's true. Also, they're in a game where they're supposed to kill each other. Yeah. So why would he help you? Yeah, a little bit. But, you know, I mean, it's still shitty. It is. People in the audience began shushing each other then, although Coriolanus did not know why. As the hall quieted, he picked up on what sharper ears had detected. Somewhere, ever so faintly, someone was singing in the arena. His girl. Stop calling her that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. I mean, it is cute when like an old guy calls his wife my girl. Like, I think that's cute. But like, Well, the the issue here is there's no parody between them. No, I know. It's creepy when he does it. He's doing it in a possessive way. And there's no like necessarily there's not there's a weird power dynamic. There's all kinds of fucked up things here. I'm just saying like I don't necessarily have a problem with my girl. As a term it's not the worst thing. No, but I I understand the possessiveness. But when an old man says it I'm like oh. Right. But in, in this particular case it's deeply possessive. Yeah it's creepy. Lucy Gray emerged from her tunnel moving in slow motion and backward. She lifted each foot with care as she stepped behind herself swaying gently to the rhythm of her music. That was the extent of the lyrics. It's just a bunch of laws at the moment. It's all laws, yeah. But it was compelling nonetheless. Following her, as if mesmerized by the melody, came half a dozen snakes. Can you imagine her, like, figuring out that they're hypnotized by her singing? Like, that would be so weird. Well, there you go. All right. I guess this is working. What song would you sing to snakes? What would be the song you'd pick? Poker Face. Any particular reason? It was on top of mind. I feel like the snakes could have fun dance into poker face. It's got a nice beat. Just start doing weird synchronized dances and shit. That'd be cute. That'd be cute. Yeah, I like and it. Because snakes kind of lash out of stuff. It seems like they poke. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they definitely poked, they uh, poked Coral's the shit face. out of Coral's face. Yeah. That's rough. 
Listen, we joke so we don't cry. None of the snakes were inclined to attack her, though. In fact, she seemed to be drawing them from around the arena. The bunch under Tesley's pole thinned. A few dropped from the stands, and dozens slithered out of the tunnels to join in general migration to Lucy Gray. They surrounded her, flocking in from all sides, and Gaul is pissed. God damn it! Making it impossible for her to continue retreating. The bright bodies undulated over her bare feet, curling around her ankles as she lowered herself gently onto a chunk of marble. With the tips of her fingers, she spread her ruffles out in the dust, as if by way of invitation. As the snake swarmed her, the faded fabric vanished, leaving her with a brilliant skirt of weaving reptiles. Incredible. Chapter 20, Allie. Take it away with your notes. Gaul so did not buy that. The snakes no, were specifically no. meant to kill Lucy. No. Eh. They were in the colors of her dress. But they were always like that. From the time she got reaped. She didn't change the color of this. I don't think she... she no, I don't... I, mm. She said she was specifically inspired by Lucy. Because Lucy dropped a snake down Mayor Lip's daughter's back. And is wearing that color dress. Yeah, but it's not like she she re-engineered the snakes to be that color. So you're saying that the snakes just happened to be the exact colors of Lucy Gray's dress? Lucy Gray is wearing essentially a tie-dye dress. Hang on. This is the dress. That's not tie-dye. That's It's uh, multicolored. That's, it's multi... All of those are natural colors for snakes to be. Natural colors for snakes to be. No, Red, she pink-ish. I don't think she... Would she she killed the whole batch of snakes and then re-engineered them so they would look like... No, why would she do that? An homage. She said she was inspired by that because moment. And all the snakes just happened to be the same colors as the dress? The dress is like 11 different colors. I don't know. I don't know. I just I just don't think she, she killed and then redid the thing. I don't know. What do you mean she killed and then you're, redid You're the proposing thing. that she re-engineered the snakes to be given colors? They've already been those colors. I thought you she were specifically saying engin- she hasn't changed the snakes. This she has had the same snakes since Lucy's reaping, but she specifically designed them to be those colors. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Because maybe. she was inspired by that moment. Uh, m- maybe. Maybe. I, I, yes. I, I don't know. Come on. So Anus thinks of creepy Festus as a friend, the yeah. dog fighting Fester himself. I really hate this kid. Okay, but Persephone doesn't know she's a cannibal. And I feel like that's an important distinction because he's thinking about the fact that Persephone's a can. Like he's he's going, uh, all of them are flawed. Festus is creepy. Persephone's a cannibal. And I go, okay, but Festus knows he's creepy. Persephone does not know she's a cannibal. And that is an important distinction. Don't you believe? I would say yes. Yeah. I that was an accidental cannibalism. And that I think is forgivable. It's more forgivable than a deliberate one. I feel like if somebody came to me and was like, I was manipulated into eating a person, I would not judge them for that. No. I would have follow-up questions. Yeah. Like, how were you manipulated into eating a person? But if if somebody came to me and was like, I am a bad person for eating people, even though I didn't know that I was eating people, i go, I don't think that makes you a bad person. Yeah, if you didn't know, I mean, I get it. Clemencia isn't sleeping, and her eyes are shining in the light, and that is all so much. That's not what you want. Anus, you're in danger, dude. I wouldn't be friends with you either if you left me in the hospital turning into a snake person and neither visited nor did anything about it, but that's just me. But you did know what she had planned for you, planned for you, lying liar. I don't trust Clemencia at all. No. Like, there's no way we're focusing this much on Clemencia and then nothing's going to come of that. But I don't know how something's going to come of her. But she's becoming a snake person. Something's going on here. So did Lucy kill that one girl who drank the water? Unclear to me. It is now clear to me. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Snow, what are you doing? Don't fucking trust Clemencia. He got to keep her. I don't remember who said that. I think it was Snow. It's probably Coriolanus. Ew, 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 ew. Does it occur to you at all that she might have people she loves back in the districts? Imagine. Because he's like, thou shall get to move here and stay with me and perform in What's-His-Face's music hall. You fuck. And I go, what if she has family? You fuck. You fuck. 
Uh-oh, heat advisory. That's not good for Lucy and Reaper. Or anybody. So I don't think Reaper has killed anyone at this point. Nope. Even and though he, he said he was going to. Yeah, we talked about that last week. She poisoned him, I think. His puddle with the water bottle, maybe? Yeah. I fucking knew he was becoming a peacekeeper. You did. You nailed I it. Fuck nailed that You're one. You're always right. Grr. Yes. Coriolan has squeezed his hands into fists, unsure of the viper's intentions. The snakes in the tank, having been exposed to his scent on the proposal, had entirely ignored him, but these seemed magnetically drawn to his tribute. Could it be that the environment made the difference? Violently released from the warm, close quarters of their tank into the vast, unsheltered arena, were they seeking her out as the only familiar scent they could find? Had they gravitated to her to harbor in the safety of her skirt? And he's like, well, she doesn't know what's going on. I guess she just thinks the song is working. And then we get the song. I mean, yeah, because what else would she think? And the lyrics go, you're headed for heaven, the sweet old hereafter. And I've got one foot in the door. But before I can fly up, I've loose ends to tie up right here in the old there before. And Coriolanus is like, ah, this makes me think of this dumbass breadcrumb shit. What dumbass breadcrumb shit? Sejanus's breadcrumbs. Oh, Death yeah, rituals, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be along when I've finished my song, when I've shut down the band, when I've played out my hand, when I've paid all my debts, when I have no regrets right here in the old there before, when nothing is left anymore. And they cut to a wide shot, and we see that all of the snakes, she's, she's pied pipering them. I'll catch you up when I've emptied my cup, when I've worn out my friends, when I've burned out both ends, when I've cried all my tears, when I've burned conquered... Burned out both ends is life with IBS, am I right? <laughs> when I've conquered my fears, right here in the old there before, when nothing is left anymore. I'll bring the news when I've danced off my shoes, when my body's closed down, when my boats run aground. When I've tallied the score and I'm flat on the floor, right here in the old there before, when nothing is left anymore. When I'm pure like a dove, when I've learned how to love, right here in the old there before, when nothing is left anymore. And then she just sort of hums to them for a while. And Lucky goes, Lucky's just like, at the camera, like, that was nuts. I hate him so. And he goes, like, he might be worse to me than Coriolanus. Well. I, I, I know that Coriolanus is a war criminal, but I just can't stand a competence. I really can't. Well, head game maker, uh, take a bow. And everyone starts clapping, and Gaul has an unreadable expression on her face. And Coriolanus is like, oh, man, I'm fucked. I'm super fucked. Oh, yeah. No, he's super fucked. Thank you. But the focus today should not be on me, but on Gaius Breen. Uh, perhaps his classmates might share some remembrances with us. I just want to know why she started singing to the snakes. Yeah, it's kind of her M.O. When, she, when she's in a bad state, right? She starts singing. Maybe she was just, like, walking around singing. Why would she be doing that? She it's wouldn't be doing Games. that, no. Yeah, I don't know why she would start singing. Uh, it seemed like it might soothe them. I mean, I understand that impulse. Singing is soothing. That's true. She's thinking, like, what's the opposite of... Pss, 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 pss. <laughs> I saw that as a meme one time. Coriolanus, uh, of course, is ready for the interview because uh, Gaul prepped him for it. She said, hey, bro's dead. So, you know, get ready to say something poignant. And he says, well, we could he never... Goes, he goes up there and he goes, something poignant. <laughs> We could never let the death of such a stellar youth of the capital go without repercussions. When hit, we hit back twice as hard, just as uh, Dr. Gall has mentioned in the past. Oh my god, you suck so much. You hit first, you buffoony tune. So the day ends, it starts raining, and uh, Coriolanus decides he's gonna, he's gonna talk to Clemencia. Now, I don't think that her eyes shining means that she's got, like you know okay do your eyes shine in the darkness if there is light do my eyes shine in the darkness eyes shining in the darkness is a term often used to show that somebody is awake and that they have their eyes open and that their eyes are glistening okay but you know what i pictured you picture her having literal snake eyes no you know what i pictured like a dog's eyes you know how like when your cat when the cat is standing yeah like yeah and their eyes the do that door, creepy and shit her eyes do that creepy shit that's yeah. what i was picturing i don't think that's what's happening that's what i understand that's what's happening all right when we go to the movie when we go to the movie, we're going to see how they portray that. Well, her her scales are going away. 
They're going away? Yes. Oh. Did they go away? He whispered. Clemencia tensed. They're fading. Finally. Okay, well, that's what she says. They said it may take as long as a year. Are they painful? Not painful. They pull on my skin. It's hard to explain. I'm sorry, Clemmy, really, about all of it. You should be. You didn't know what she had planned? No, I, I didn't. But after, in the hospital, I, I should have been there for you. I should have broken down the doors to make sure you were okay. Yes. But I know you were hurt, too, in the arena. And then they, like, they have this whole little conversation. I don't trust her. And shakily renew their friendship. I do not trust her. And decide they're semi-allies again. I do not trust her. She's a literal snake person. We're going to trust the literal snake person? The next morning, uh, the snakes are all dead, by and large. Because I guess either the cold or the wet or not eating killed them. What if he marries Clemencia? I don't think we're going to get that answer this book. Who he marries? Yeah. It's I mean, he's only like 18. I know, but it's one of these. Probably, I'm, I'm yeah. sure it's one of these girls. Reaper, Persephone. Reaper continues to not eat the food that is sent. Smart. Because he thinks it's poisoned. And he starts just eating, oh, drinking yeah. out of puddles. Uh, and that, that ultimately is what gets him. Yeah. Uh, and he's so close, too. Oh, this part. So Treach and Mizzen, like, start miming eating. And Persephone sends uh, food. And then Tesly runs up and has her, like, jerry-rigged drone. And right. And she sends it to attack. And Urban watches because Vipsania goes, does she think that'll fly? Even if it does, how can she control it? Urban goes, she wouldn't have to. She she wouldn't need to. If, But h- how did she? And uh, she just kind of sends this drone to kind of hover near Mizzen. And Mizzen's drone comes and drops some bread and then reverses course to leave. And then it gets about 10 feet away, turns around and comes back. Do you remember this? Yeah, and the drones started attacking Mizzen. Yeah, because Persephone sent a bunch of drones with a bunch of food. And all of these drones, essentially what what uh, Tesli has done is hack the uh, drones to fuck with their homing so that they only know to fly directly at Mizzen's face. Listen, that's genius. As the other three drones arrived, one at a time, they malfunctioned in a similar fashion Mizzen was their sole target, and what had seemed at first funny turned deadly. He got to his feet and attempted to flee down the beam, but they swarmed around him like bees to a honeypot. Having left his trident on the ground, he pulled his knife and attempted to fight them, but the most he achieved was momentarily knocking them off course. They weren't programmed to make contact with him, but as they ricocheted off one another and his blade more and more collided into him until they gave the appearance of an attack. Mizzen began to grope his way to a pole— the very one on which he'd left Tesley to her fate, but his knee would not cooperate. Mm. Frantic now, he took a wild swing at the drones, throwing his weight onto his injured leg, which wobbled, and then gave way. He lost his balance and plummeted toward the ground, Ugh. snapping his neck sideways on contact. Oh! Persephone exclaimed as he hit the ground. Oh, she killed him! And Vipsania goes, That is what the point is. She's smarter than she looks. And... Urban goes, do not judge a book by its cover, especially if it belongs to me. Okay. We are gloating over the death of a child, so let's, you know, perhaps not. And then Treach jumps in and cleaves her brain in two with an axe. Yeah. Um, So. Yeah. I mean, that is what happens when you are too focused on one particular target. You don't always see somebody else coming happens all the time in some show that we've never talked about on this podcast (laughs) so now we're down to lucy gray treach and reaper lucy gray treach reaper i forget what happens to treach final three final girl final day maybe that too and lucky goes hello Panem, and he has a hat on with five sparklers in it. No, no. had this hat done especially for the final five, oh but God. they've been sending up their own sparks. He That's pulled two so sparklers cheesy. out of the hat and hurled them over his shoulder blindly. Final three, anybody? Listen, here's the thing. I always think that to be cringe is to be free. <laughs> I I saw that phrase somewhere at some point, and it has stuck with me ever since. I'm like, to be cringe is to be free. To be cringe is to be free. But this is so cringe. It's too much. 
that I don't want you to be free. One of the sparklers. If this is cringe for you. Fizzled out on the floor, but the second set a curtain to smoking, eliciting a high-pitched yapping sound and panicked footwork from Lucky. What? You a mean having member- fire in a film studio isn't a smart idea? A crew member ran on screen with a fire extinguisher to handle the crisis, allowing Lucky to regain his composure. As his three remaining hat sparklers died, the number for sponsors and gamblers began flashing at the bottom of the screen. woo The betting's getting hot and heavy. Do not miss out on the fun. Oh my god. And they're like, well, we have enough food, so this is kind of pointless. This guy reminds me of Ryan Seacrest in the early days of American Idol. Do you remember what Coriolanus is, uh pitch is now to get people to help lucy gray even more uh the singing the snake thing man she's not even district oh yeah i i feel a great injustice because lepidus is doing interviews i feel a great injustice may have occurred by her being not just in the reaping but in district 12 at all people will need to judge for themselves if you agree with me or even suspect i might be right uh you know what to do here's my thing one I feel like this is actually going to make things a lot harder for her when she goes home. Probably. Do you yeah. think that the districts are going to be really happy about the fact that he was doing that? Well, she lives, so. I know, but when when she goes back home, how do you think people are going to receive the fact that this like capital boy was so vehemently distancing her from the districts? I don't think that's going to go over well. No, I agree with you. It will not be great. Maybe she drops him like a like a like a hot potato. Like a hot potato. That'd be great. She definitely eventually will drop him like a hot potato because yeah. his obsession with Katniss is weird. Yeah, a little bit. So uh, Lucy Gray sneaks out of a tunnel. Oh, I didn't even notice this the first time. What? While Coriolanus ordered her a feast on his communicuff, Lucy Gray crossed to Reaper's puddle and knelt. She scooped up water, slaking her thirst and washing her face. After combing her hair with her fingers, she twisted it into a loose knot, finishing just as a dozen drones entered the arena. She appeared not to notice them as she took a bottle from her pocket and dipped the neck into the puddle, collecting an inch or so of water. After swishing it around, Lucy Gray poured the water back into the puddle, and was making to refill the bottle when the incoming drones caught her attention. As the food and water began to drop around her, she tossed away the old bottle and gathered her gifts into her skirt. Because she couldn't do it. She couldn't pull out the compact. She had to figure out a way to do it that wouldn't get picked up on camera. I did not notice that the first time. Yeah. That's good. That's smart. I mean, it's terrible because it results in the death of a child, but it's smart. Incidentally, uh, Reaper has now gone down and laid two more bodies out and covered them with flags. And he's like looking gaunt and haggard. And Coriolanus is like, this dude might just die. He's not looking so good. Coriolanus starts counting. Sorry, Lucy Gray starts counting. And uh, Coriolanus goes, she's trying to figure out who's left in the game. Maybe Reaper the said the thing about, sorry, I'm going to have to kill all of you because he was hoping that one of them would just attack him first. That would. Yeah, that's possible. Because it's such a dumb thing to say. It is. And then he doesn't attack any of them. No. Lepidus goes, oh, maybe we should put it up on the scoreboard. And Coriolanus goes, I think the tributes would find that helpful. Seriously, that's a good idea. So that's the beginning of the, you know, thing in the sky. And then, lo and behold, Treach jumps out of nowhere and starts swinging. At Lucy, right. Mm Mm-hmm. I forget how she gets out of this. Well, she throws herself at Treach. Oh, the snake. She has a snake in her pocket. He shoved her away, dropping the axe and tore something from the back of his neck. His hand shot into the air, fingers gripped tightly around the bright pink snake. Then he collapsed to his knees and smashed it into the ground again and again until he fell dead in the dirt, the lifeless snake still clutched in his fist. Her chest rising and falling, Lucy Gray whipped around to locate Reaper, but he he still sat rocking in the stands. Momentarily safe, she pressed one hand against her heart and waved to the audience. With her pockets full of poison, she'd made it to the final two. Pocket full of poison... So then we get like the really depressing and sad ending. Yeah. She eats. Uh Coriolanus thinks about how he's going to win the plinth prize and he th- uh, and he wanted to keep her safe and close at hand, admired and admiring, devoted and entirely 
unequivocally Ew. his. Ew. If what she'd said just before she kissed Ew. him, the only boy my heart has a sweet spot for now is you, was oh, true. Oh my god. Well, then wouldn't she want that too? He's gonna be such a pain in her ass. Stop it, he thought. No one's won anything yet. Now he's not thinking, stop it, that's a weird thing to think. He's thinking, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Because this guy sucks. <laughs> He is worse than Gail. He says that he wants her devoted to him. Devoted. Any man who uses the phrase devoted to describe his ideal woman is a red fucking flag. The only thing I'm going to be devoted to is a cheese pizza. Ooh, yum. Mm. So they're just kind of like hanging out. Reaper's just lying up in the stands baking. And Lucy Gray is just kind of down in the in the arena. And yeah. Lucky, uh, uh, Lucky starts talking about his stroke, and she runs over to Treach's body and drags it over to Reaper's morgue. And only when she touches Treach's body does Reaper get up and yell something at her. And because why well, he doesn't want he's her like, don't you fucking yeah, with the body? Like he's like, don't do it. Don't touch them. Lucy Gray let go of Treach and ran to a nearby tunnel. Reaper assumed the job of transporting Treach, placing him neatly in the row of dead tributes and covering him with the flag remnant. Satisfied, he made his way back to the stands, but he only just reached the wall when Lucy Gray ran out from a second tunnel, pulled one of the flag pieces off the bodies, and gave a holler. Reaper whipped around and ran at her. Lucy Gray wasted no time in vanishing behind the barricade. So this is like, let's speed this up. This goes on for quite a while. Um, he gets tired out. Well, I'm sure she's worried that the puddle's going to dry up. Yeah, she's just trying because she is actually she's sitting there looking at the puddle and watching it. Uh, yeah, it gets I think I smaller skipped that, didn't smaller. I? Yeah. yeah. She's like, oh, fuck, I poisoned this puddle, and he's not going to drink from it. Yeah. And so she's trying to, I think, kind of dehydrate him a little bit, so he wants to drink water. Yeah, they're running back and forth. She's running him around the arena. Reaper staggered a bit as though drunk. Flag in tow, he made his way to his puddle, one of the few that hadn't dried up during the afternoon. He dropped down on his knees and drank, slurping until only a muddy sludge remained on the bottom. As he sat back on his heels, a funny look crossed his face, and his fingers began to knead his ribs and chest. He vomited up a portion of the water, then retched for a while on his hands and knees before rising unsteadily. Still gripping the flag in one hand, he began to walk in slow, uneven steps back toward his moor. He knows he's done. The Reaper had just made it when he collapsed on the ground, dragging himself in line next to Treach. One hand made an attempt to pull the flag over the group, but he managed only to cover himself part way before he drew in his limbs and went still. Ugh. Coriolanus sat frozen in anticipation. Was that it? Had he really won? The Hunger Games? The Plinth Prize? The girl? He studied Lucy Gray's face I as she watched Reaper from the I stands. I hate it. But she had a distant look, as if she were far away from the action in the arena. Yeah, you think? She just killed someone. Yeah, it's horrifying. Lucy Gray... Half an hour passed before Lucy Gray climbed down from the stands and approached Reaper... She placed her fingers on his neck, checking his pulse. Satisfied, she closed his eyelids and tenderly arranged the flag over the tributes as if she were putting children to bed. Mm. Good God. Good God. That's a fucking line. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I, I wanted to read all of this because I think it's beautiful and depressing. And seeing all of this from this vantage point changes changes how it reads so much. Because it's there's so much detachment from what's happening, and it's so clinical, and it's so fucking sterile, and it's so sanitized and you know, and broken down to its constituent actions, and it's appalling, and it's so good. She's so smart. She's just such yeah. a smart writer. It's like unfair how good she is. Then she went over and sat against a pole to wait. And then, of course, she's she's got a she's already stuck us with the knife, and now she's got to twist it. This seemed to convince the game makers because Lucky appeared, jumping up and down, announcing that Lucy Gray Bear, district a tribute of District Twelve, and her mentor Coriolanus Snow had won the tenth Hunger Games. Ugh. And then they pick up Coriolanus's chair and parade him around. Hooray! And they interview him, and he has cake and Posca, and. He sits in a place of honor. Uh, Coriolanus sat in a place of honor, receiving congratulations and downing more Posca than was good for him. So what? Right now, he felt invincible. Zero reflection from this motherfucker. Zero, zero consideration of what has happened. Zero learned things that are good 
oh my god this is uh, 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 this is terrible this is horrible i'm, I'm having, having a wonderful an amazing time. time shirts now available they are actually yes <laughs> In our merch store. Very uh, on brand for the Hunger Games that we take this opportunity to then plug a fucking shirt. Well, I know that's why I did it because yeah. I thought it was so perfect. It is pretty fucking In funny. how horrible it is. So he's, ah. getting, he's, get, he's getting lit and Satyria Click grabs him and takes him to the biology lab and she goes, I think they're bringing your girl over. Don't be surprised if they put you on camera together. Please stop calling them his well girl done. or his girl. Please stop. Please stop it. Just stop. His Stop. lips stretched into an insane Stop grin. It. He'd won. He'd won glory and a future and maybe love, too. Oh, my God. Any minute now, he'd have Lucy Gray in his arms. Oh, snow uh, lands on top. It most certainly does. God, he forced his cheeks to relax it. as he got to the door and straightened his jacket to help conceal the tipsy mess he actually was. It wouldn't do, somehow, to let Dr. Gall see him like that. When he opened the door to the high biology lab, he found only Dean Highbottom, sitting in his usual place at the table. Close the door behind you. Coriolanus is obliged. Perhaps the dean wanted to congratulate him in private, or even apologize for abusing him. A falling star might one day have need of a rising one. But as he approached the dean, a cold dread washed over him. There, arranged on the table like lab specimens, were three items. An academy napkin stained with grape punch his mother's silver compact, and a dingy white handkerchief. The meeting could not have lasted more than five minutes. Afterward, as agreed, Coriolanus headed directly to the recruitment center, where he became Panem's newest, if not shiniest, peacekeeper. Oh, I hate this guy. I hate this guy, too. You know, just This the, couldn't have happened to a worse person. That ending there, that all the stuff with the bodies and with the the, the the dying children trying desperately to venerate one another and, like, cling to humanity and do something. Oh. And Lucy having to come to terms with what she's done. And then we just get Coriolanus Snow getting rip, rip shit, shit drunk. drunk. And, and thinking about how he's about to get laid. For him. And, and, yeah, like, and he's going like, to have her in his arms. Her. And I'm like, dude, do you think she wants a hug from you? Right now, when you're like this, hey baby, especially I know you just murdered three children and watched many others die. But how about a quickie? Ugh. So this is agonizing, and I'm glad that he got fucking busted down to be a peacekeeper. Unfortunately, I didn't get to bust him right in the fucking face. Yeah, I want someone to punch this motherfucker so bad. Not Tom Blythe; he's great, but Coriolanus is Snow. What a piece of shit this kid is. I was talking about Tom Blythe. <laughs> no, I was obviously not talking about Tom Blythe. Uh, any thoughts about any of this? Or shall we uh, I, call it? I'm in agony, but it's I a good like thing. I feel like he's got to see Lucy again. Lucy Gray again. I bet. I feel like there's going to be a lot more Lucy Gray in this book. She is the deuteragonist. Yeah. There's... She's definitely going to be around. So Janus will be there, too. Probably. That would make sense. And we're just going to see everything go to fucking hell because of Coriolanus, aren't we? Well, he's going to make it worse. If he's there, it's going to be worse. So there you go, I guess. Uh, uh, well, on the other hand, on the bright side, we're doing a live reaction to chapters 21 and 22 on Sunday, this coming Sunday. Uh, what is that? The 10th of December. Mm hmm at uh let's say 10 a.m pacific time yeah so uh, if you're pint level patron or higher we'll see you there if not we'll try to actually take notes this time um but no promises because it's sometimes it's, we just we have get too much really fun. really into it so sorry about that hey thanks for listening everybody uh we have social media if you want to know what we've got going on it's linked down below i'm so sad from reading this that i feel very odd doing a, a an upbeat uh, outro uh, we also have a Patreon if you want to support us that way. It's patreon.com slash wheel takes. And you can always leave us a way to a little rating and a review, which helps a lot. Other than that, do we want to do an improv game or just sadly walk away from the microphone? I feel like I need a palate cleanser, so okay. I think I do need an improv game. All right. What do we want to do? Mind meld or Dr. Know it all? Mind meld. Okay. It's fun. Three. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Okay. Wait. Uh, okay. Got it. Three, Three, two, two one, one tigress snow. Mm. You know what? You know what's fucking crazy? You almost did snakes. I was this close to doing snakes, and then I was like, I think I did snakes last time. You did, but it's relevant. That's why. Okay, snakes that and tigress snow. Yeah, snakes and tigress snow. 
three, three two, two, one, Coriolanus. Coriolanus. Fuck wow. this guy. Wow. We for are in sync everybody. today. Bye. Bye. Bye.